Hi, everybody. So you guys already know about WordPress, obviously, or else you wouldn't be here. Um, what I want to help you to appreciate today is why we can use WordPress as a learning management system. How many of you are familiar with learning management systems? OK, quite a few of you. So for those of you who are not familiar with a learning management system, a learning management system is kind of like a classroom uh, that's within a school uh, in that you can teach the lessons that you are an expert on to students who want to learn it from you. And so typically, you know, we, when we're thinking of using WordPress as a learning management system, we might think, oh, well, you're just going to be blogging. But plugins allow or other optimized themes will allow you to distribute this content in a way that's most effective for your students to be able to learn. The reason we love WordPress is because it's customizable. Uh, we, of course, when you install WordPress out of the box, it's just you know this blank slate. But you can use, of course, your coding and development as well as plugins to turn it into really anything that you want it to be. So when you think of marrying WordPress and a learning management system, you wouldn't want your learning management function to be any less customizable than WordPress itself. Otherwise, you know, you could just go and use something like Kajabi or something like, um, you know, Udemy to teach your courses because you're going into someone else's school to teach your class. But when you have WordPress, with that, you can use WordPress as your own school, your own classroom, in your own building. And so then you can customize it to look and feel and deliver content the way that you want it to do. So I don't know what that sound is. I hope that's not me. If it cuts out, I'll talk. So, <laughs> so when we think of a WordPress and being married to a learning management system, you have an expansive learning opportunity. Um, you can do things like quizzes, you can do videos, you can have evergreen content that's continuous every any time of the year somebody starts uh, to sign up to your class. They'll get that saved six to 12 weeks of education and go through the course and go on about their business or you can do something that's timed, you can issue certificates, you can use gamification or other ways to really make your content exciting. But because you're using WordPress to deliver that content, you have some opportunities to really make it very fun and interactive and really work for you. Because of course, you can see we're a diverse group. We don't want all of our classes to look exactly the same. Even if we were teaching the same subject, we want to be able to Make it ourselves, make it look like us and fit our branding and our way of teaching. I'm good at talking, you might be good at writing, you might be uh, good at some other way of delivering content, so you want it to do that for you. So customization is a huge thing. Why at heart LMS learn, what WordPress lear learning management solutions? Well, I've already stated some of those things. I could just go and buy Kajabi, as I mentioned, I'll tell you a little bit about Kajabi before I get stuck here. Kajabi, if you're familiar with it, is really a, is a solution. It's its own platform, its own software, and you pay your 200 bucks, you upload your content, usually text and PDFs. If you need to embed video or other types of collateral, you can. Uh, it integrates with a couple of, a couple of other things, like uh, f if you're familiar with Infusionsoft for email, content or MailChimp, you can do those things. But if you wanted to match you and flow the way you do, it's like, yeah, you can change some pictures. <laughs> you can, you know, put your logo on it. But that's kind of dumb because nobody likes that. But when you have WordPress uh, learning management solutions, you can look at things that, such as your themes, as well as plugins that are, are that you can purchase straight out the box and use those with an integration that's specific to what you want to use it for. So if you only want to drip content, you might want to only look at a plugin that just drips content on a regular interval. Or if you want uh, something that where you are selling the registrations 
needs for you know, one time ver or a recurring thing, you want to get a plugin that just does that, rather than getting a one size fits all thing. I also hate school. And so for me, learning online was very important. Uh, to go in and leave my house, especially on a cold, wintry day, and to go learn something from a teacher I don't really like just made no sense for me. I think uh, a lot of us learn very differently. We only get, you know, some of us have uh, short attention spans, and I'm one of those people. And so I consult entrepreneurs, but I have limited time. So instead of making one person pay $2,500 to work with me, how about I make it affordable and I only teach it one time? I might develop the content over a, cor a course or a period of time and then upload it so it can always be useful to the people who need it the most. So it, it just made sense to try this as a solution. Again, freedom. A lot of entrepreneurs are looking at like the four-hour work week. I want to go live in Costa Rica. I, I want to go and sell the seven seas, but I want to make money because I don't want to be out there like the couple shoveling poop. You know, I don't know if you read the article about the couple shoveling poop somewhere else. That's not glamorous. As you see, I'm glamorous. I do not want to shovel poop somewhere else. So how about I develop this course? I know a whole bunch of stuff that other people don't. Let me teach them and use WordPress and its plugins or its themes or whatever tools that they have available to create a learning management system so that I can do that. Also, flexibility. And now we have some other options. We don't like things all the same. He has on kind of vans, he has on flip flops. They're all shoes, they're all functional. They do what they're supposed to do. So then we want to choose a theme or a plugin that allows WordPress to work as a learning management system. So let's take a few uh, look at themes and plugins that are available to us to deliver this content. Uh, just a real quick thing, I know a lot of you might want to see screen shares of particular plugins and things. It's so exhaustive, I don't want to overwhelm you. I want you to just understand the concepts behind going and finding something that works for you. So when we're looking at something like Optimize Press, they have a couple of ways to uh, get that. You can get a theme or you can get a plug-in. At least that's what it was at one time. It might just be a plug-in. Um, Wishlist Member is a very uh, familiar one for many who are already teaching classes or who are thinking about it because not only can you deliver content uh, in a certain way, uh, I, I would say on sequences, but it's uh, you can leverage forums and social networking in order to unlock really the, uh, the power of the community around uh, whatever course that you're teaching. Rainmaker is not an independent WordPress platform. It is based on WordPress, but if you want to take your course away from Rain Rainmaker, you have to go through like a, a process of like packaging it up and then trying to move it somewhere else. It really is not a standalone, but it is WordPress based. So if you want to log into the back end, the back end looks very, very familiar to your typical WordPress dashboard and where you're up uploading content. Uh, what makes it really awesome is it has some uh, themes and other analytic tools to help you to know how people are moving through your course. And so you have uh, the option to really leverage it for exactly what you want to do, and that's selling information and courses online. Then uh, we have a plugin. Actually, the second column is plugins. I didn't uh, label that right. So Zippy Courses is one that I'm not familiar, familiar with yet, but the selling point for me is that it can let me know how a student is moving through my course. I think some of you might be unethical and just want people to buy your course and not really care about whether or not they're actually learning. But Zippy Courses will allow you to look at analytics to see, is somebody really taking my course seriously? Is, are they really engaged or did they buy it, go through lesson one and then you know, die off? 
And this type of information is very important because as you inc improve your instructional design, you kind of want to know whether or not what you're teaching works or how you're delivering it works. And then if you need to adjust how you're delivering the content or even the plugin that you're using for it, uh, you need some of this analytical data. Uh, there was a talk yesterday about WooCommerce uh, and its powerful nature, and there's so many add-ons. I think I think that was that guy. Was that you? Okay, <laughs> I loved your talk. Um, there's you, you can Google any type of add-on that you can you want to use, but Woo, Woo, uh, WooCommerce and Sensei, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, unlocks the ability for you to purchase a course and and then move through that course. Um, and then there's a WP courseware, a million other uh, tools. I found out yesterday about Lifter LMS, the guy from Code, uh, Go Code Boxes here, Thomas in the house. Uh, <laughs> I actually took a look at Lifter LMS yesterday. It's pretty awesome. I think I'm gonna ditch these solutions and I'm not just doing that because he's gonna pay me. No, I'm just <laughs> No, but it actually was really cool in its simplicity, and I really like what uh, Chris Badgett and the Go Code Box team are doing because their focus is on simplicity, and a lot of us are not instructional des designers. We may have a very basic understanding of WordPress, so the more simple it is, the easier it is for us to get launched and actually start making money teaching what we know. And it's really important for uh, those of us who may be developers or, or designers, we, we're not teachers. <laughs> we're not teachers, so we have to be able to be flexible in how we deliver content. We might be better writers. Uh, we might want to use something like gamification to make it really interesting for someone to learn content from us. But whatever it is, we need to look at what's best for us and then ultimately what's best for our students and then make the choice in whether we're going to use one of these uh, solutions that we have available to us. <coughs> Industries. So I, how many of you are entrepreneurs? Oh, well, that's a whole lot of you. Uh, <laughs> some of you might be entrepreneurs in the educational space, meaning, okay, and so you might be looking at teaching a, a, a standard curriculum like at a co like college level education, something, uh, I don't know, rocket science <laughs> or something. But then there's people who are just learn teaching something like art. Uh, if you're familiar or as addicted to uh, MOOCs as I am, you know, there's Creative Live or Skillshare or any number of those courses where you're really just learning something like finger painting for dummies or something like that. So looking at the industry uh, that you're teaching, you m can also make decisions as to you know, whether or not you want to use video to deliver your course or do you want to use something like Adobe Captivate <laughs> in order to design a more in-depth class that requires people to read, for them to take quizzes, for them to be certified, and so forth. I've kept this class intentionally vague because I can't tell you what's best for you. Also, integrations. Do, are you going to market this? Hopefully so, because you can't make no money if you're not marketing it, right? So in terms of integrations, you might be familiar with MailChimp, any of you? MailChimp, Infusionsoft, Constant Contact. Those are email marketing tools that allow you to communicate with hopefully an audience that you've already built. Hopefully along the way you've uh, thought about things like sales and marketing and so you want to make sure that if you're going to use WordPress plugins in order to market and deliver content to people that it also works with what you're already using. So um, one thing that I thought was pretty awesome about Lifter LMS is that it also, the, we, they will be looking at Zapier integrations so that this is something that can be automated and work, uh, really work for you and work with some of the things that you're already doing. What are the biggest problems? Well, back to Kajabi, I, I already bought into it. I already spent my hard earned income buying into this program and it was extremely difficult to set up for me. Um, for, fortunately, now they have Kajabi Next, which is 
kind of a dumbed down version. It's not so hard to set up. But getting the curriculum right was very important because it needed to hopefully be something that people wanted to buy into and then make me my money back. Again, we have to look at sales and marketing. Of course, if we are just trying to build authority, we might not do a lot of sales per se, but there is definitely going to be marketing involved, whether or not that's marketing by way of you know, Periscope videos or um, any uh, you know, flyers in the mail or whatever. There's always this going to be this thing where you're kind of gathering your tribe into your fold. Uh, and then there's engagement. Do people even like your dumb little course? You want them, when it to be important, uh, n not just to you, but also to people who are buying into it. Of course, our sales and marketing could be really shiny, but if it falls flat on delivery, hey, nobody really gets any value out of that. And we want to deliver value because, of course, we're in here for a purpose of impacting people's lives. If we want to deliver better developers, we want to teach a really good development course online. If we want to deliver better uh, guitar players, we want to teach that most effectively. So we have to look at those things. Curriculum, that's supposed to say what to teach and how, not what to each and how. So what to teach? Somebody, you might like it, but do other people like it? So a good strategy for figuring out what to teach would, would be to go to something like Udemy or to look at, uh, and I'm, I'm referring to something that I read on a, a learning management system blog, figure out what people are already wanting to learn. You don't really have to go into a big survey or market research to see what is a good subject. If you're seeing uh, people kind of gathering around a topic and you're qualified to teach it, well then go for it. Don't uh, decide that you want to teach basket weaving if nobody wants to know. You won't, definitely won't make money. Sales and marketing, sales and marketing. You got to get that almighty dollar dollar bill. Are, would any of you consider yourselves marketing people? Cool, cool. So you might employ a very uh, variety of different types of tactics in order to draw people to you. The purpose of marketing is really to ultimately get to get you the opportunity to then make a sale. So your marketing is really kind of just getting on a, mega, a megaphone and talking to people and seeing who is responding. Of course, if your marketing is very targeted and speaks very specifically to a problem that someone is having, you're more than likely to then convert that person. But if you are like the person who's yelling in a forest and nobody hears you, you won't get the opportunity to make a sale and conversion. So when looking at tools, you might want to think about a tool that has, an, uh, um, has the marketing and sales funnel into, uh, abilities built in. But again, that depends on your industry. With some, something like, I want to say, uh, premise plugin which preceded Rainmaker Pro they had the ability for landing pages to be built in uh, they had the, abil uh, the ability to integrate with some of those other software they also had uh, Yoast integration so that you it would boost SEO so people would actually see the sales page and hopefully convert for that so thinking of those things is very important. No, it's not specifically uh, WordPress. It's not specifically your learning management system, but it's gathering the people to this WordPress learning management system so that ultimately you have the success that you're looking for. Engagement, they're in. Now what? So if you've looked very carefully at the curriculum that you've developed, um, maybe even testing it with a beta audience to see that it's very useful, then you can optimize it. But you have to look and make sure that people are even interacting with it. Is it too bloated? Are you talking too much? Are you over explaining? Is it instead of, could it be four weeks as opposed to 12 weeks? Could you break the content up into uh, a three different, like a 101, a 201, and a 301? 
you have to look at some of those analytics in order to determine and make decisions in order to optimize your course because you don't want this to fall flat on its face because we all want to send uh, sell the seven C's. I know I do. <clears throat> Before deployment, remember this. Keep it simple. Keep your courses simple. Uh, if you look at some external platforms or kind of uh, the, the platforms that everybody, anybody can sell on, like Udemy or Skillshare or Creative Live, they're all like five minutes classes, maybe 10. Uh, so when you look at the course, keep the curriculum very small and bite-sized to, to, to work with a person's attention span. But then look at, uh, like the previous speaker talked about, um, the user experience. When a person gets into your site, they've registered, they've created uh, their account, and they're moving through things. Is it very easy to navigate? It shouldn't really be it require you to already have a master's degree in order for you to move through your site. So use some of WordPress's existing tools in order to work for you. So of course your menus, uh, if you have categories in order to break up coursework, you can do that. If you want to break it up by week, like week one, week two, week three, or this is if I'm teaching a business class, this is email marketing on, on this menu item and this menu item is uh, leveraging social media or this one is leveraging Reddit as a community builder to drive traffic back to your site. Use some of those other features of WordPress in order to make it make sense for other people. Building a community and authority is something that I've mentioned before. But you know, a lot of that isn't for, you know, that's not something that you pay for. You don't pay to build the community or build a community. So you're not making money up front just by building a community. So one way you can think of, uh, you know, the preparation before launching your course is start offering things for free. Start delivering content for free. One thing that I do quite effectively is doing a webinar for free and also having a Facebook group and answering questions, offering value without making people pay. Well, then when it's time for me to launch a class, then it's time to say, well, hey, this is gonna cost you to get this premium experience and to get, maybe I've given you A, but I'll give you B through Z if you sign up for this course. So before you even get to that, Make sure you're, you're already delivering content or value to people. You probably heard it before and you'll hear it again. Give the people what they want and don't come, don't come delivering some whack information. It doesn't work. Now, I talked about some of these external things like Skillshare and Udemy. If you think of those as like a mall or a superstore, you can just get your little store in that, that mall but you want to send people back to your home store or your flagship location, which will be your own self-hosted WordPress site. So it's nothing wrong with teaching on these other platforms. You just want to use those other platforms to get the, you know, leverage their marketplace, their marketing that they're already, you know, they've already done well and drive people back to you, which might be at, you know, coolwebdeveloper.com. Just use those, don't think of those as like, oh, these are bad. No, those are also tools to drive people back to you. So use those things uh, when you're starting to look at um, marketing opportunities and also other opportunity to make money. So uh, <clears throat> if a tool doesn't work for you, ditch it. Don't nobody got time for that? Uh, sweet, let me go back. If you can, and then also, if you can integrate, if there, if a tool that you're using is not integrating with something that you use to run your business, um, you can either ditch it and switch to something else, or if you have the skills, build something else, B uh, build a new tool, build a new integration, build a patch, work with someone who can if you don't have the technical knowledge to do that. Of course, you have many people within this room who can do that for you, so I encourage you to network if you're already looking at the, uh, solving that type of problem. And then I said, launch and get money. We all need money. I mean, shopping addictions, 
<laughs> I won't even go there. I went to Ross and spent like way too much money. I was trying to be on a budget, but that didn't work. Um, <clears throat> and ultimately, if you need more, ask me some questions. Yes. Hmm. Yes. I can't, I'm sorry. I can't hear you. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Well, <clears throat> I think you have to be balanced. Um, of course, you can't deliver everything in the body of a comment or two. So you do answer their question to the best degree possible within that forum. But you can just simply ask if they want to have a consultation with you, they can. Or if they want to be notified when your course launches, they can go to you know coolwebsitedesigner.com and get into the funnel so that when you're starting to vi uh, drip uh, information to them and get the, their mouths wet for this course, they'll already be aware that they can do that. Yes. Okay, do you have any examples of courses online that are built on WordPress? Oh wow, there's so many. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer, what is your website? Well, my website is uh, teachgoodstuff.com and it is helping people create e-courses and digital products. Um, the site that I have for my course is uh, Create a Course That Matters, helping people design courses that are not just um, content but meaningful learning experiences for people. So my course is Create a Course That Matters. And you built that on Wishlist Member? I built that on WordPress, uh -huh. and I used uh, the plugin called Wishlist Member, which just protects the content. It doesn't set up an actual class structure, okay. like you talked about Ziggy courses, but I used Wishlist Member. All right, all right. Wish list member. So that that was. Uh, well, let me. Yeah, I had it on here. It's the second one. Wish list member. So I just really quickly. Uh, in terms of content, we can think of courses as just like a blog that drips on a certain schedule. That that's as basic as you can get. Like, I'm going to launch a blog that has this video and these downloads att you know, attached every seven days. Or you can use some, another tool like Adobe Captivate to start you know, using, like creating scenarios that, and really, put, really treating it like an online training program, especially if you're looking at an application of uh, a corporation teaching its employees, they're probably not going to just use just a WordPress post with video. They, they're probably going to want to create some very unique things that people, uh, in order to deliver the content. So uh, you have to look at that. Wishlist member is great. It, I don't know that. Uh, I, I think you would probably have to create your courses in Adobe Captivate and then use a tool like Wishlist Member or Zippy Courses or Lyft or LMS to deliver it uh, and create the best learning environment for your students. Yes? I <laughs> I don't. My course was about money making memberships, and it's mostly about content development. Um, I I think that's probably the best way to do it uh, for me because each of these tools have their own courses on how to use that tool. So you kind of have to look at it a, at a different way. Um, I think I have five more minutes for questions. Go ahead. You mentioned that some of those are themes and some are plugins. So on the left side, I think those can come as both uh, themes and plugins. So they initially, when Optimize Press came out, I think it was the actual theme, and it had you know all of these bells and whistles that could do or make your WordPress site uh, a learning management system. Now, because I think uh, people want to have the ability to customize and make it look pretty. Uh, they've just uh, used, they're creating plugins so that they can make a pretty website work as a 
WordPress LMS. And then if you see that link at the bottom, there is a bunch, if you just snap a picture of that, you can look up that link later. There's a list of really good, good themes that can be used as well as plugins that can be used at, to turn your WordPress site into a learning management system. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What do you think about the experience API or SCORM? Is that important in uh, creating an LMS? I'll be completely honest, I do not know what you're talking about. Because <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a developer and I don't really know about I APIs and integrations that much. And so, it probably best asking someone who does know. I'll shout out Ron. Ron, stand up. <laughs> this is my coworker. Uh, he's an awesome developer, and he probably would be able to answer that question for you more effectively. Yes. Um, you're going to be kind of like mostly $10 courses. Right. Um, do you kind of offer a dumbed down version on that, and then have like a little bit, uh, I guess, advanced version on your own side? Or do you, the same and then you could. I think you could do it both ways. You can offer a dumbed down version, but I think it's best not to because at that point you're leveraging that marketplace. So maybe it's ten dollars, but you might have five thousand people who take your course. Whereas if you have it just on your website, maybe you have a list of only a hundred people who will learn about your course. So you might uh, be able to um, you know, charge a little bit more in order so that you make it worthwhile. Also, when it's on your own platform, you can upsell the, your personal one-on-one -on -one time between classes. So you can manage it either way. I, I don't say dumb it down. I just think if you're um, hosting on your own platform, you have a lot of other opportunity to do one-on-one um, -on -one consulting to drive the value up. Yes. Um. I'm noticing how when you're listing these places where you're putting out the teacher classes, that you're not listing places like YouTube or Instagram. Well, well, those aren't going to pay you. I mean, unless you're looking at uh, something like AdSense for revenue, you're not really going to get paid, but you can use something like YouTube to host the video that you then upload to your site. At that point, then you need to make the video unlisted or else you're giving away your content for free. And the whole point is to make money. Right, but I'm asking for your teaser classes. In other words, the ones that say, oh, look, I'm an expert at this, not your more in-depth, which I... Oh, teaser. So, like, for your marketing stuff. So, yeah, absolutely, you can use WordPress. I mentioned Periscope. Uh, I like Periscope. You can then, I think, download video and upload it to YouTube. Maybe not. I don't know. But you definitely have any other number of tools that you can use in order to create, like, a sizzle reel that says, this is what you're going to get if you go ahead and pay. Uh, specifically with the Premise plugin, which is the plugin that preceded the Rainmaker uh, software from Copy Blogger Media, their landing pages have an opportunity uh, to embed YouTube video. So you absolutely can use YouTube as an introduction to your course. Any other questions? Yes. Uh -huh. And then you see all the links to the, uh, the sites that so the courses. The, the you have the, the uh, subscription to. Right. And so you just have just one ID, one password. Right. Do you know any tool that you can Yeah, so there's a couple of different ways you can look at it. It's not WordPress based, but there's Fedora that is like that. It's a subscription, you pay for it but it's somebody else's. You don't own that. F-E-D-O-R-A. But I think that you can do that in Lifter LMS where you create a bunch of different courses. And that's and the, the program that just... Go Code Box. Shout out to Thomas. Thank you. Whoop, whoop. No. <laughs> so yeah, I think you can do that with that. So my time is up. If you have questions, tweet me. SuccessHatchery.com. We're going to be launching another class.